Welcome back, my scrubs, to another episode of uh, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Now, I'm actually really excited because a breakthrough has been made. Without a doubt, I know something is going on behind these files now. You all think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I might look crazy. I might need a shower, but I'm not crazy. I just look crazy. I need to change this music to something that's more fitting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not... Yes, piece by piece, because piece by piece, we're getting these theories. All right, so I did not want to do any snooping around online to see if anyone else fixed it, but one of you guys tagged me uh, on a Twitter post, and once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. What do you want me to say? So Joseph Ferraro actually tweeted me this, and I found it very interesting. In last episode, I theorized that maybe we can mess with something. There's got to be something we can mess with in order to basically do what the files want us to do. And I thought maybe we can input like a name, but they actually told me you need to change your time on your system. Okay. That just shows me I, we have been looking at this all wrong. We really need to be using our brains here if we're going to come up with these theories. All right, I really want to finish the side stories, but I, I just can't help it. I'm drawn to this. All right, so it says, Hey, Scrupi, while I was playing through Doki Doki Plus, I found myself, I found out how to solve the first tower key. Yeah, so there was like these tower keys? 2.40, clock time, which means to change the time on your switch to exactly 2.40 a.m. or p.m. with the code 221. Oh my god, I think you actually can. <gasps> Two... So, so AM or PM does... Are you sure? Alright, I hope the day doesn't matter, but it, there's 2.40. Clock time. That actually makes a lot of sense. It says clock time. Okay, so now what? Alright, so let's, let's see exactly what they're talking about, right? We go down to the game files, and I believe it's under the... No, it's internal. Yeah, internal backup. Tower keys. Clock time. 2.40. Okay. Oh my god. This is freaking crazy. Dude, what are you gonna get? That's my question. What are you gonna get after all this stuff? You got a special freaking picture with Monica flipping you off? <laughs> hey, what the- <laughs> Master Chief is invisible. What the heck? I forgot. <laughs> oh, Monica's glitching my cup. Master Chief, what the heck did they do to you? Okay, so they, they also mentioned in their note something about internal storage. I actually wanted to look at that. I didn't want to do it off camera. I wanted to do this on camera. So really, really, we're just messing around. But I want to see the save data for Doki Doki and see if there's anything weird with that. Because I, I was thinking about that. I was like, wait, I should probably check the save data if you can. There it is. There it is. Oh, God, I have to close the game, though. Whatever. I guess we're closing it. <laughs> oh, we really need to check for some corrupt data. <laughs> I guarantee you there's some corrupt data in this one. Okay, this is not what we need to do though, at all. Okay, so that didn't work. But, so the game does mention something about transferring a file to some sort of storage, or it's transferring something for storage. I just wonder if like, if it makes a difference if we put like, the save data on like, a memory card or something? Like, literally, I, I'm not gonna put anything past like, a freaking Dan Salvato. Oh, internal. So there's internal. So, okay, with the code 221, it's a code in the files, you put this code within the eternal storage. Well, what do you mean? Are you saying, like, the, like, okay, 221? Oh, project plan. Was that there before? Wait, there will be files here that are called 12345. Yeah, okay, so you put the code in there, which is three sets of 12345 files. Okay, so yeah, I did, I thought that was weird that there were so many of these. So I, I actually already had thought that maybe there was a secret code, like a, a secret, like some string of numbers that would tell us what file exactly to go to. Uh, but I wasn't sure exactly how that would work. Okay, so, okay, well, I found this. So 221 folder. Uh, this won't be able to access the file, which gives you an error until you change the time on your switch to exactly 2.40 a.m. or p.m. Wait, I did that though, and it's still not opening. Is it, oh, did I wait like a minute? Is that my problem? If you figure this out on your own, you're actually really smart. Good freaking job. I also considered like uh, disconnecting from Wi-Fi too and see if anything will change. Bro, I'm like that freaking meme with the dots. Let's actually give us, let's give ourselves at least a minute here. There we go. I don't know if I should be restarting the game or what, but there, see, look, two, 239. We're gonna wait exactly for it to change 240. God, this is the longest minute ever. This is gonna be kind of crazy if it actually opens. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, it actually opens. Holy crap. Dude, I am shocked right now. I actually, <laughs> this is really, I can't believe it actually works. Okay, project plan outline, high level overview, create human readable version of fabric benchmark results. 
suggesting we live in a simulated universe. Yes, well, it's, I mean, the, the thing's called the metaverse, so I'm not surprised. I knew that th none of that crap was real. I mean, well, I mean, I think everyone knows that really, but yeah. Emulated fabric benchmark results in virtualized environment. Yeah, because this is a virtual machine. Build parameters for genetic iterations, custom elevated access levels for one or more entities. A lot of this is like really doesn't make any sense to me. Iterate until simulation is stable for target time threshold. This is our small scale simulated universe. Observe effects of elevated access knowledge of simulation. Okay, okay, so that stands out. Observe effects of elevated access knowledge of simulation. So what, so they want to observe, so, so the plan is to get this test, test subject and let them find out that they're in a simulation and see how they react to that. Collect and record data. Pitch findings to upper management as a profitable venture. Do not go through Barry, go straight to upper management. Who's Barry? Number eight, get promoted, job saved. Okay, so this is, so someone's doing this to save their job. Possible team members, Ro, uh, has most knowledge access to Commander Quantum Server. Ravi, second to Ro. Lib, Lib. The Libatina? Fix naming scheme conflict with Lib Folder. I've, sure, why not? Others. Why does it be so confusing with their freaking notes? VM1, virtual machine one? I don't know, I'm just guessing. Current project, small scale simulation. VM2, future project, medium scale simulation. VM1 details. Okay, oh, okay. all right, just make it to where you guys can pretty much see. Okay, so this is VM1 details. Literature equals production of text assets. Easy data collection. Four entities, characters. Small physical space, efficient for server and genetic iterations. Highly elevated access permission creates very stable connection window for data collection in exchange for less realistic simulation scenarios. Okay, so whatever Doki Doki is, is a small scale simulation. There's four entities, which we know, in a small physical space. Okay, still don't... <laughs> I'm still very lost, but this is really interesting. Wait, I won't spoil what's in this file because it gives you lore in the next clue to the next secret file. So what happens if I try to open it now? Does it not- it oh, doesn't work. At least it's really easy to get to. That is so interesting. Okay, alright, so let's go to those access keys. Okay, so, alright, so that's 240 down, 221, and then key pair 2, boat? Boat. What does that mean, boat? What does boat have to do with anything? Okay, they gave us a hint. Go to game files, and you will see a file called poemworks text under Yuri's words, there will be a hidden time and code to put to find the next files. I also found some codes by putting random combinations in to find files, but I have not found the times yet. Yesterday when I was like snooping around the files, I think I found that that thing on, on accident without realizing, like I was just looking through every single file that I could like possibly find and, uh, and it wouldn't let me open it. So I didn't know you had to freaking change or switch time. Okay, so there's the game files. Homeworks. When I first looked at this, I thought this was only Sayori's because I, it's it's right there, but it actually has all the characters. And yeah, I actually thought the same thing. I was like, I think it's a little weird that all these like files, right, have these numbers. And I figured that was the only code we could sort of put in, but it, it didn't really seem to make a lot of like sense. But under Yuri's, I'm actually looking at something and it just says 915. That's not a word. That's weird. <laughs> is, that what they, is that what they said? Here, let me... Okay, yeah, so they did mention that. Hidden time and code to put in to find the next files. Oh, okay, okay, all right. I get it, I get it now. So we gotta change the time to 9.15. So once we change it to 9.15, we go to 1.30. Joy-Con drift, could you stop? It's so annoying. It's like, I can't do this. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, meeting notes too. Okay, lib, promising work on recording simulation activity into playable scripts. Playable equals observable form, not a game. Stay focused. I've pretending to type important things while waiting for every everyone to get back on topic. 4.30, still target, end time. Assigning names to simulated entities for easier reference? A, B, C, D should suffice. Oh, wait. Okay, so the entities are definitely the girls. One, two, three. Using real names only encourages treating them like pets, 
rather than simulated entities. Everyone is trying to come up with stupid names now. Control simulation, create identical VM without, virtual machine without entity. A having elevated access permissions, create identical virtual machine without entity. Seems unlikely, nothing has come close so far. Clone virtual machine one, same elevated, I'm just assuming it's virtual machine. Same elevated access, but prevent the entity from discovering it. Seems tricky, but plausible. Meeting over time. JKLSD. Why would they randomly let a cat run over their keyboard? What the heck? I don't know if they said this in the in the tweet, but we're gonna try to change it to 430 and just do one, two, three. One, two, three. <gasps> yes! <laughs> It actually works. I okay. To be fair, I'm not testing this without the time, but I'm assuming that they probably wouldn't work unless I actually change the time. Okay, uh, operation, not a game, but I've laster. What, dude? Why are they so gibberish? Control simulation track zero six name ideas. Work together. Discussion time. Debate time. Brainstorm. Listen up. Teamwork time. Let's discuss. Let's teamwork. I'll handle it, leader. Take the lead. Wait, track six. Oh my god, we need to change the music. We're gonna have to change the music. Text face names, maybe for another track. Zero three zero. Zero three zero. Wait, zero three zero. There it is. We need to change. Oh my god. We need to change. Guys, we need to change the music to freaking track number six. And then go to zero three zero. Okay. Zero three zero. Poem Panic. Is this really gonna work? Zero, three, zero. Wait, meeting notes three. So interesting enough, they actually mentioned zero, three, zero right here, and then 404, 344, and 501. So these are all things that are gonna lead to different notes. These codes, I haven't opened them yet because I haven't found the time to access them. I hope this helps to get you started. Thank you, dude, this is so cool. This is really interesting. Got me all hyped. They got us on a wild goose chase. But I was thinking though, what if this isn't the true track six? What if we actually need to unlock all of the tracks in order for me to access the true file six? Because if you look through the, the, the playlist numbers, one, two, three, four, there's no skipping numbers. And I would assume if you're gonna lock new tracks, right, then maybe, maybe this isn't the true track six, if you know what I mean. We gotta go back here. We, we gotta go back to Yuri's file real quick. I'm also thinking that the control simulation is is probably encouraging us to delete maybe Monica's file and trying the game without it, or maybe deleting one of the character's files because this says create identical virtual machine without entity A having elevated access permissions. So whoever entity A, maybe we need to delete them. That's just an idea. Okay, <laughs> I am taking a picture of this. It's a lot easier than going back. This is so creative that you have to use like even like the freaking music tracks probably. Okay, so let's look at the names. Here are the actual names, uh, ideas of track number six. So track number six could be called Work Together. Is there anything that's called Work Together? Uh, no, it's just Poem Panic, which that doesn't seem to be right. Okay, so we have Discussion Time, Debate Time, Brainstorm, Listen Up, Teamwork Time, Let's Discuss. Is it Let's Discuss? Isn't that like a track or no it is possible that we don't have all of the tracks like i said but maybe uh okay everyone that kind of sort of resembles teamwork let's just see all right zero three zero let's see what happens <sighs> it doesn't work no <laughs> on the bottom it says text space names maybe for another track zero three zero how much you want to bet this track is actually probably one of natsuki's tracks because that's kind of a really cute thing right the zero three zero is like that that freaking you know, like little anime face thing. Uh, we got mail. What? Okay, my face cam isn't on, obviously. I'm on leave the rest of the week. Contact Ravi if you need to schedule server time, but I expect my jobs to run for a few days. Since we've collected so much data this week, how about we arrange a meeting to discuss the results when I return? And it has a date, so we could probably change that. I've Laster. We've seen that name before. In, in one of the previous notes. Um, I'm sure we could put this date in, but even if I did, I wouldn't know what to do with it. But it definitely did something. And we got a new side story. So all I did basically was go through Sayori's route. And we have... Okay, yeah, so... <laughs> I thought these were the only ones. I was wrong. There's actually more. Getting so close, guys. We're getting so freaking close. 75 years later. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not the same person as you last saw me. Okay? 
You're probably wondering why an episode of GDLC uh, Plus didn't come out yesterday, and the reason why is because I was so like, I don't know the word for it, enamored? I wanted to know the secret file so bad, I spent all day yesterday just playing the game from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep. I was playing GDLC, I was playing on the toilet, I was playing everywhere. If, I, if it was possible, I would have played in the shower. Don't mind the terrifying background. I am a Doki Doki master. Now, okay, I went through the side stories, but I didn't actually read them, so I still plan on uh, doing all the rest of the recordings and reacting to all the side stories, but I just like, I just skipped through them. That way we can get all the secret file stuff because as soon as I fi figured out about the secret files, that was it. That's all I could think about. That's all I wanted to do. So as you can see, I got freaking 98% data collected and I unlocked every freaking picture there is. Some of the things you have to do to unlock these pictures are like crazy, but by far the hardest ones were the stupid secret poems. Because in case you don't know, when you go through the game, you only have three chances to get secret poems and you could get the same ones like 10 times in a row. I know because it happened to me. And finally, this is the one that I actually had the most trouble on. I kept seeing this one, but the thing is, you don't unlock it until you sit there and stare at it for a while, and then it finally, there's like a dot, and then it says, I love you. So, I probably beat the game like 10 times this morning alone. But remember I said I got mail, guys, remember? The more you unlock, the more mail you get. So there's a lot of freaking emails I have not read. I wanted to save it for the video, that way I could read it with you guys, because I want to freaking try to connect the dots here and see what's going on. So I noticed another name, Ive Laster, came up once again. Uh, and here's another really cool thing I wanted to talk about too. Okay, so this is from Lib Musy? I do remember seeing that. Having run the control simulation for a while, it's evident that a certain character is missing from any mention or appearance. This makes me speculate that Monica meta Monica's meddling is less clumsy than we think, because she would have had to manufacture this character herself as a way of forcing interaction between her and the user. Could that be why this character has such a limited and dis dissonant personality traits, or am I reading too much into this? I'll open an issue to start tracking info and observation of the anomaly of this character appearing. Yeah, so, yeah, no doubt, like, these people are these, like, I don't know, they're scientists? I don't know what they are, but they're definitely running like a simulation in order to impress their boss. And Metaverse is just a company. So this email is obviously talking about the main character in the game, uh, because it's talking about like, this is character that has no real actual like traits or personality. Just something Monica created, essentially, in order for us to interact, interact with her, I guess. And I believe we actually get this picture after receiving that email. And I think I got that email just by, by going through the side stories and just going through the regular game. Like most, you don't really have to do anything special to get these emails. That's why I had to go through the entire freaking game. But anyway, once you receive that email, you get this really cool picture. It's what the freaky main character looks like. A rough concept sketch of what the faceless protagonist might might have looked like if he was a real character, provided in an email communication. Dude, the first boy character in the game. The only thing we've ever seen is the back of his head when he hooks Sayori. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. I'm really glad they at least got it, uh, let us see like what the main character would have looked like. I know it says might, but I I I. I mean, that's the only thing we got, so I'll take it. So I don't know if I, at some point, like, were they gonna show him? That would have been pretty cool, though, if they actually would have showed him the story or something like that. Oh my god. By Ive Laster. I don't know who Ive Laster is. I think it's like an engineer or something? Okay, who's responsible for creating a Twitter account for Monica? I think it's hilarious, but for God's sakes, don't tell Paula. Okay, Paula is mentioned once again. It would get 404 in a microsecond. Are you just relaying her tweets manually, or did you code some kind of password layer to automate it? Based on the contents of the tweets, not screaming for help, I assume they're coming from a control simulation. Yeah, Dan Salvato actually has a Twitter for Monica, it's like legit. I think it's like Lil Monix or something like that. <laughs> OMG. So yeah, like these people seem like they're like pretty much normal people. Alright, this one's from Paula Miner, staying focused on our goals. As a reminder to help guide our data collection, any analysis performed should be focused on answering some of these main questions. How does granted uh, elevated access to the uh, VM affect a personal's emotional state? I'm assuming maybe phase two is what they're talking about, or like act two when everything gets all glitchy. How does granting elevation ex access to the VM affect a person's values and goals? How does someone effectively na navigate an experiment with their ability to change the contents of their VM? How is elevated access being weaponized? What actions and values most contribute to the destruction of the universe? Most importantly, how might your observations apply to our own universe? Bonus. 
How can we present this to the upper management as an operation that benefits the company? It seems like their motivations are purely just to make the company happy, but who's putting them up to this? I mean, I guess the, the head of the company? I, I don't know. Unrelated note, whoever changed the color scheme of the desktop to pink, can you please change it back? It's unprofessional and it runs the, the risk of drawing eyes. So it's not supposed to be pink, I'm assuming? Okay, another one from Paula Miner. I even tried, dude, I, I've tried everything. I've tried naming my characters, like Ive Laster, Paula, Dan Salvato, just, just all kinds of crazy crap, man. Okay, so this is ethics. Simply put, it's not our job to arbitrarily decide upon some code of ethics just because we're the first ones to do this, to our knowledge. That's the government's job to figure out long after we've made enough headway for it to no longer apply to us. It's fundamentally flawed to apply ethical reasoning to this anyway because humanity's code of ethics is based upon nothing more than our knowledge and understanding of life forms similar to ourselves. We don't have ethics to kill killing bacteria or plants. Okay, so this is, I guess, related to like when you're talking to Monica and her universe, or you know, her space thing. She starts talking about like veganism and stuff, or like she she starts she mentions that she's vegan, but uh, she only does it for the climate. And she goes on to express how like we actually kill these organisms without even like knowing it every single day without batting an eye. So why do we decide that animals are more important than plants and you know this and that? It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting uh, viewpoint on the subject. So it seems I think this may have unlocked when I unlocked that. To get one of the pictures, you have to like listen to Monica for so freaking long. Only for the creatures that we can convincingly protect our emotions, project our emotions onto. The humans in our VMs operate completely different from us on a fundamental level and therefore should not be taken any more seriously than a machine that's programmed to print. I feel sad. Hey, that's messed up, man. How can you treat my best girl like that, Natsuki? Okay, so they're warning not to get an emotional, any emotional, um, you know, connection to any of the characters in Doki Doki. We're engineers, not philosophers. We got some weaves up in, up in this uh, science team or something because they're getting freaking sprung on these characters, uh, I guess. Alright, so Ravi Rosso. Has anyone elevated the side effects that might be caused by sharing a memory pool between multiple VMs? rather than allocating them separately. I'm looking at some of the files VM1 is generating and I'm finding some information that definitely shouldn't be there. I have seen, I haven't seen any evidence that is actually affecting the inside of the VM itself. So I don't think it's a priority, but it's definitely worth noting. My best guess is that memory being freed from VM2 isn't getting zeroed out, which technically gives VM1 access to it. All the info I have will go into the issue uh, issue tracker, but I wanted to check if anyone else already noticed something along these lines. Okay, so I think I'm pretty actually convinced now that VM1 stands for Act 1 in Doki Doki Literature Club, and then Act 2, when everything goes glitchy, is VM2. So that's, they're saying that basically things are crossing, they're going in, which they obviously do. I actually took some screenshots as well. I took a lot of screenshots. Look, my, my controller is so broken, I literally can't even go up. This is so sad. If you randomly quit the game at some points in the game, you'll find these like files that are just randomly in there, which you guys probably already knew that, but there may be some new ones. So yeah, you can pause and read that, but like, this is just like a lot of, this must be what they're referring to, like these random notes and they're like, how did it get here? I don't know, I don't know how I got here. So obviously like Monica was definitely self-aware and creating stuff that they didn't know about. Randomly, when you start the game, you'll get these messages. Don't forget to back up Monica's character file. I have granted kids to <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, when Yuri dies and you quit the game, you get have a nice weekend. I think I remember that though from the last game. I just I forgot about this and I thought this was funny. <laughs> when did I play Fortnite? <laughs> All right, Row Teaser. Yeah, I think we've heard of a row before in, in the, the files. I've made some headway with VM2. Don't get too excited. It's still impossible to establish any kind of stable connection. But it occurred to me that I could at least run a memory dump through some pattern analysis routines to see if we could decipher any digital data from the VM. I didn't want to hog all the server time on a hunch, but I have some preliminary of results that indicate the presence of binary computer systems. Based on this, I'm going to schedule three days of server time next week to isolate any chunks of memory that appear to be binary data. If successful, we'll definitely be able to find some encoded text and get our first tiny glimpse of VM2. Don't mind me though, just keep going nuts on VM1 and hopefully I'll have more to sh uh, share soon. So, I don't know. I'm guessing before, like, us, the player, have played it, they were trying to figure out, like, what was going on, you know, running experiments with these Doki girls. I'm still struggling to kind of, like, 
see how this relates and like really have a good answer. Another thing I think I need to do, which uh, you have to use a guide for this, by the way. There's just some things that like you cannot figure out on your own. I had to use a guide, so I'm not even ashamed to admit it. One thing I have not done yet is apparently the song Candy Hearts, if you play it uh, all the way through, it'll unlock an evil version? So I haven't done that. I wanted to save that for the video, so let's listen to this beautiful song. My question is, why is there an evil version of this? Because these songs are only from the side stories. I Like I said, I haven't played all the side stories. I just skipped through them just to get the da like the data that we needed just to unlock the, you know, secret stuff. But I don't know if that means that there's like a freaking, you know, I don't know if something crazy happens. The side stories are mentioned, though, uh, in the emails as far as I know. So yeah, yeah. So Rio Forte side stories. Thank you to everyone who worked so hard on the control simulation. I can't imagine how tedious it must have been to, de to delicately hide Monica's elevator permissions from her without disrupting our connection to the VM. Just to clarify, all this recording's labeled side stories are part of the control simulation, right? I'm noticing some details of the characters' lives here and there that differ a little bit from those in VM1, even trivial ones. Is it part of the butterfly effect from some of Monica's more fundamental changes, or is it a result of her just messing around with the other characters in VM1 as her own experiment for fun? So the side stories were created by Monica as well, I guess? Or did they? I, I don't know. So if I'm keeping track, we have what? Like five different universes in total, with three or four of them created then destroyed by Monica. Of course, it's funny because I keep wanting to speculate on which one is the real universe, but in reality, they all are. As real as ours is, anyway. So, okay. It does say in the side stories, it says at, it says at the top of side stories that basically they're different from the main game, but I guess like all of them could be potentially different universes. I really want to play through self-love. And also, of course, equals. I don't know what that even means. All right, I've been playing through Candy Hearts. Is it... Have I unlocked it yet? Nope, not yet. I don't know how long it's going to take, but let's keep playing. Another thing that I can't show you is that if you actually use the touch screen on the Switch and you drag your finger across the screen, it creates like a box. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with the PC, right? How you can make boxes on your desktop. Like, if you just drag, you can do that. And I would have never known because, like, until I actually took it and started playing it as a touchscreen. So you can actually touch everything with touchscreen. So I was thinking, man, what if we could do something secret with that, you know? I'm telling you, I've learned everything about this freaking game. <laughs> Alright, so while we're waiting to unlock that, I noticed in the OMG email, it says 404, so that's obviously one of the files, right? 404. DDLC text. Crap. <laughs> Uh, I need to find the times for these. I don't want to use a guide for them, but I don't even care at this point. I just want to know what they say. <laughs> I would like to find them. So I figured out the answer to this one right here. It's the internal 344. I actually figured this one out myself, luckily, because when you open the game, I'll, I'll put a screenshot or something like that. I noticed the numbers at the top and I'm like, oh, holy crap, that's one of them right there. So that's how you get this one. Oh. Oh, that was so random. Oh god, that gave me chills. Oh. Imagine. Imagine if you were just sitting here, like, listening to this song and all of a sudden this happens. Dude, I'd be so free. <laughs> Holy crap, that is really creepy. It doesn't even give you a warning, it just changes randomly. Why? Why though? It has nothing to do with the game. I haven't unlocked it though, where is it at? Oh, just playing again. No, not again. <laughs> oh, there it is. The Z changes it all. Alright, did that give us more? Yes! We did it! Data collected 100%. Do you not get anything though? Oh wait, we got an email. Let's move on. We need to have a meeting about shifting our focus a little bit. We resetted VM1 how many times now? You're telling me? I freaking played through a billion times. For real. We've uh, definitely collected as much data as we can from it at this point. So obviously, we, this is how you get 100%. We just need to work with what we have and try to increase the stability of our connection to VM2. We've obviously gotten spoiled by the ease of access with VM1 that VM1 offers us, but it's just unrealistic for someone in real life to be granted 
a level of elevation even close to the moniker Colonel Axis. If we can't establish a stable connection to VM2, then how can we expect to get anywhere when the same scenario inevitably occurs to our own universe? Anyways, thanks to Rose's work, we were able to acquire a few rud rudimentary logs. I have an idea on how to increase connection stability to VM2 while maintaining weak hyper -vis visor to everyone inside of the- I need to change this freaking song. Ironically, it has to do with something that they're building on their own VM. I'll go into more detail in a more formal report, but some of the log files indicate attempts of theirs to pull together the access potential of multiple individuals to a single parallel unit. It sounds ridiculous, but if they actually get somewhere with it, then we might have a solid entry point that doesn't heavily intrude upon the VM. God, this is also confusing. I'm going to spin up a read-only hypervisor that we can use to test different ideas like this. The elevation level will be set to monitor adjacent runtime level access. The VM will just be named Test VM for now. Although the parallel access unit they're building on the VM seems to be called Project Libertina. I've been like waiting for that to be mentioned again. Holy crap. According to the few logs we have, we can change the name once we actually get a decent picture of it. So it sounds like there's multiple people with different versions of the game and someone is making a Project Libertina. But how does that relate to everything? Oh wait, what the heck? I didn't even realize we unlocked this song. Let's teamwork. Okay. Okay, so like I mentioned previously in this video, there was a song, remember, that was listed on one of the papers. So that's the time. So 158. Okay. I mean, I thought we were gonna have to play the song, but just it's just the time of the song. Then we gotta go to 030. Alright. I have not opened this one. This is the first time I've opened this one. Alright, what does this say? Control simulation in progress. Idea snapshot slightly earlier in time. Compare end of control sim to start of VM1. Better comparison than both being parallel. There's lots of mentions of parallel. Mature control sim versus reference VM1. Easier to detect failures to hide elevated access permissions. Fifth entity in VM1. Not part of original genetic model. Not present in data dumps. Very bizarre. Ive is less talkative today. Meeting end on time? What the heck happened to Ive? 1255, OMG. Wait, OMG. Okay, so that's gotta be the time for the email then. What ha What is happening to Ive? And the fifth entity, is that Monica or is that us? Or is it something different? No, it, it can't be Monica. It must be us, the, the player, I'm assuming. I, I don't freaking know. Is this all an experiment on us? DDLC text, Doki Doki Literature Club. Welcome to the rebellion. What? Okay, that sounds interesting. We're all working our butts off with our jobs on the line, so we might as well have some fun with it too, right? I totally get why Paula wants to rush into data collection, but my proposal is to shift our efforts a little and build out some new features for making real-time connection to the VM more useful and fun. I said Paul, I meant Paula. If we're basically simulating a miniature universe, then it's kind of a waste to not be able to spend some quality time in there, right? But actually, I think wrapping this whole thing in this guise of a video game is great, and hilarious way of covering our tracks and if we do a good enough job we might even be able to present it to paula as a useful endeavor so i'm assuming paula is a higher up key selling points five to six hours of misery dread and cute girls learn through the existential crisis of others how to cope with your own simulated universe witness the destruction of a universe over and over in a video game form god i've done that ha 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 this is going to be absolutely amazing and no, the irony isn't lost on me. Creating a secret team within a secret team is more meta than I signed up for. And that's saying something considering we literally work for the Metaverse Enterprise Solutions. We can come up with a fake game studio name and everything too. Obviously no plans to go public with this, but it would be a good part of the whole disguise. Plus I want a cool team name that makes us feel like a bunch of heroes for saving the universe. Kidding. But we're at least saving our job. Something like Team Salvation? Team Salvato? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, it's extremely hard to piece this all together. So this thing wasn't originally supposed to be a video game? Ugh. I'm too dumb for this stuff, guys. But the thing that really stands out to me is right here. Learn through existential crisis of others how to cope with your own simulated universe. 
Witness the destruction of a universe over and over in a video game form. Why do they want to put people through this? Isn't this a lot like, spoiler alert? Okay, spoilers for Danganronpa, just saying. Skip over like 30 seconds. This sounds a lot like Danganronpa. It's like they're trying to put people through simulated stuff to, to put them through these tests. And we can only assume that the test subjects are the freaking, you know, in Project Libertina, probably done on real people. They're doing this in a game first to test things out, and then they're doing it on real people. That's the only thing you can really assume. And I think we are one of the test subjects. Okay, so this is the last one. 14.txt. Dearest Ive. So Ive is being mentioned once again. Where are the years going? Doesn't it feel like ever since we graduated, we're just the same doofy college kids, but we're being put into increasingly adult situations? It's hard to believe how much can happen in just one year. But all my memories this year are full of reminders why you've been why you've been my very best for so long. My gratitude for you is higher reaching than the mountains I'm going to live in after faking my death. Throwback to you actually entertaining that plan after helping me break up with Daphne. To this day, I can never tell how serious or joking you are about things. This is very personal for life in general. But I think I would literally implode if I didn't have you to remind me that things never matter as much as they seem in the moment and that things will always be okay. Imagine if we really do end up working together at Metaverse. That's literally the only way I think I'd be capable of coping with a mundane, mundane, how do you say it? Mundane desk job. I know you said that your referral of me won't go very far because you're not a senior engineer, but I'm coming out of my rough patch. It's the future I imagine for myself every day. Future. Future. I'm sorry for always being such a bundle of stress. I always feel like I want to be doing more for you because the amount you do for me just seems more than anything I could give back. You've inspired me to always improve and then, and when I don't believe in myself, I stay motivated to become a better person so that I can deliver all of my best qualities to you. I love you and I always will until we face the end of the world together, wishing for another 14 million years of friendship. With everlasting love, Paula. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I, I looked that up, but it still doesn't make any sense to me. Where do you, where do you even, where do you even find that time at? Okay, holy crap, wait a minute. I just read right now that you're supposed to lock another side story when you get 100%, but how come I don't have it? No, I don't want to be left out of the loop. <laughs> So Dan Salvato did mention that uh, he was working on another game that wasn't related to DDLC. That could be a cover-up, potentially. For all we know, that could be Project Libertina. It seems like a separate thing, but I apparently, I, I really want to unlock what I'm supposed to be unlocking here. Moments later. So unfortunately, um, there is no patch for the consoles. And <laughs> there's supposed to be a button that says test VM, but I can't get it. And the only reason I even got it on the Switch is because I couldn't open it on Steam and I didn't want to wait. That sucks. <laughs> God. So yeah, I'm reading a ton of comments of people having the exact same freaking problem. And this is this is what we're supposed to see, but the consoles can't see it. That's some bull crap. I was trying to find a save file because I have it on Steam and I was trying to find a save file that like maybe someone can upload, but... <laughs> All right, well, big freaking shout out to Coconut Lover X. Because I can't actually access it myself, it's literally impossible unless I do everything I just did on Steam. I don't want to freaking do that. All it actually does is show you this screen with the different message each time. So that's the test VM that obviously is connected to freaking Project Libertina. Now, this sweet soul of a person uploaded all the sentences, so Without actually being able to do it, we could still at least see what the sentences say. They talk about freaking third eye penetration? Material resistance to third eye penetration, electromagnetic? All of your base belongs to us. That's a freaking meme, isn't it? Are speculated to improve third eye potency by puberty. By age five, children testing above the threshold will be transferred to wing A. Bro, yes, yep. I mean, it's just what everyone already thought anyway, right? They're doing tests on freaking kids trying to unlock this third eye. And I bet you all this crap's like a cover-up or something, you know? Male and infertile children can still be trained for specialized something. At nine months each, a total of 36 would reach peak efficiency. Bro, what kind of- this is like Halo. <laughs> In case you don't know, basically Halo is about like these kids that got tested on in Master Chief. You know, it's basically they got turned into superhumans. I feel like like they're doing the same exact thing here. There's definitely a story here, but that's the hardest part, piecing everything together. God bless you, coconut lover. So these are obviously all more notes. You know, I was really hoping to see like a screenshot or like a picture 
of like these people and maybe like one of the, the children that like they freaking, you know, like the Project Libertina, because obviously this is all connected to Project Libertina. I was just hoping we'd get a little more, but unfortunately we got text files. Okay, I had to come back because another exciting discovery has been made. A really freaking big ba uh, breakthrough right here that uh, I wanted to get this all in one video, so that's why I'm coming back. The user that goes by Cyber B uploaded their own guide that really actually does a really good job of piecing everything freaking together. I found this on Steam, by the way, if you want to go actually look at it yourself, but they really do put like a lot of things uh, together. I'm not gonna read it all. I feel like I've already read enough, but this essentially feels like something MatPat would say in a theory anyway, so yeah, you should read that. One of the coolest things they pointed out here is was Monitor Kernel Access actually stands for Monica. What the freak is this game? But the user Super Scooter left a comment. I don't even know where they got this from. They never even said it, but there's a website. There's an actual website. Just like the Project Libertina website, there's another website for Metaverse. This is what happens when you go to it. Metaverse Enterprises, we partner with entrepreneurs to bring ideas to life. So yeah, in the in one of the messages, they talked about kind of, you know, what they are, you know? They seem to be a sort of system that people can use, essentially. Like, a, you can hire them to help you. So they do web development, automation, RPA, software, robotics, or robotic processes, cyber security. Prototyping. Bro, they doing more than that. Big data analysis. And you can actually, they have an email. And I know this website's probably fake because their location, it just says New York. They don't actually have an address, so I don't think that's real. It seems like they tend to have a Twitter or Instagram and all this, but when you click it, nothing actually happens. But yeah, they have like this little like, look at this. Freaking, what is this, cyberpunk? So anytime you click learn more, it just takes you to their contact where... I guess you could email them. I don't know what would, <laughs> like, wh why would you do that? I don't know. Ask them what the heck is going on. I wouldn't be surprised if this like somehow translates to something else. Like there's probably secrets hidden in this website as well, but God, I just, this is gone. This has really gone o over my head, dude. This is, this is too big brain for me. So yeah, if any of you guys like know code and you want to inspect the website to see if there's any, maybe Monica's in the website. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, I think to summarize everything, it seems like Monica is this thing. Maybe, maybe one of the researchers put their own consciousness in there and that's what Monica is because is it, some of the ideas they explained in the notes, they sort of seem like the same things that Monica was saying, you know? So it almost seems like that maybe one of the researchers uploaded their, maybe it was uh, what's her face, Paula? Maybe up, like uploaded her own freaking personality into these, these virtual machines. All we know is that there's some experiment and some crazy dark going on behind the scenes. And I look forward to seeing whoever puts it all together. I mean, again, I, I highly suggest you go read this. I think they've done a really, really good job of like putting like most of the stuff together. But that is going to be it for me, guys. I just don't even know what to think. It's just, it's, it's too much. Here's what I think is going to happen next though. I think because uh, now that Dan Savato was charging money for Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, he's gonna have the funding to create his next game and it's probably gonna be on a bigger scale I would hope to see different elements I don't know if it's gonna be in a different form like maybe a 3d game or anything like that But I do believe that obviously with the money that this game has earned uh, It's definitely gonna pr probably be a budget for the next game that he does that expands upon this universe So yeah uh, thank you guys for sitting through this. If you did, I, um, you know, leave all your theories down below and I will update you guys if I find any more information about this. <laughs> We're going to continue on with the side story. So if you're watching this before and you want to see me react to those, uh, you know, look, look out on my channel. I'm sure they're going to be there. I'm going to go take a nap now. All right. <laughs> Bye guys.